Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, I'm going to be following up on an issue we talked about in the generic directional light shadow mapping video. Now, in that video, we had this issue of shadow banding, and that's where past a certain point, just everything is in shadow, and when you move, it looks like there's this band of shadow that's just slowly swallowing up your entire scene until everything's in shadow. And of course, that's not what we want. What we want is, well, that not to be there, and for points past that to still be in light. And in the generic directional light shadow mapping video, I talked about what this issue is, I said that I was aware of it, but I wasn't quite sure what was causing it, or how to solve it back then. Now, however, I've since figured out the problem, and i figured out a solution to it. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. So, first off, I'm going to be talking about what is actually causing this problem, and I'm going to be showing you how to implement a solution to it. So, yeah. Now, what's causing the issue is actually very closely related to a very similar issue we had in the Generic Directional Light Shadow Mapping video. Because in that video, this wasn't the only shadow map banding issue we had. We also had very similar bands going in other directions. We had issues where those other bands would overlap and make a point that's sort of half in shadow, half not in shadow. And it was kind of strange. But we solved that issue. And those shadow map banding issues were caused by sampling a point outside the shadow map. Because if we sampled a point outside the shadow map, then OpenGL would give us a zero for whatever was in the texture. And if we take a zero and run it through our whole shadow map calculation, then it comes out that that's in shadow. So that's why we had those bands. We would sample outside the shadow map, and it would return zero, and that zero would mean that point's in shadow. So the way we solve that is we modified the way we were storing our shadow map and the way that our shadow mapping calculation worked, so that if we sampled a point outside the shadow map, it would still return zero, but if we ran that zero through our shadow mapping calculation, it would return that that point was in light. And that solved those shadow mapping issues. This shadow map banding issue, unsurprisingly, is caused by something very, very similar. You see, if we sample outside the shadow map and do our solution, that solves the issue if, for sampling outside the shadow map on the x and y axis. It does not solve the issue for sampling outside the shadow map on the z axis. And that's what's causing this band. If we sample outside the shadow map with a z value that's below 0 or above 1, then our shadow mapping calculation still fails, essentially, and returns that the point is in shadow. And that's what's causing this band. So, the solution, of course, is to only perform our shadow mapping calculation, well, if the coordinates are in range, if everything is within range of 0 to 1. And if it's not, we need to return that the point is in light. So, that's the issue, that's how to solve it, and now I'm going to show you one way we can implement a solution. So, here we are, in GLSO, in the file that performs our shadowing calculation. Now, right now, what we're doing is we're just getting the shadow map coordinates and returning whatever we read from the shadow map. The most basic way we can solve this is just, if we're outside the... Yeah, if our z-coordinate is outside of the range of 0 to 1, 
then we're just going to return 1, and we're not going to bother sampling the shadow map. So the way we're going to do that is, first off, I'm just going to write a convenience function. That's going to be bool in range, and it's going to take in some float value, and this is going to return if that value, well, if the value is greater than or equal to 0, 0.0, and the value is less than or equal to 1.0. So there, it's just a convenience function. It's slightly more clear that way. And what I'm going to do is, if shadow map chords dot z, well, if this is in, how about this? If it's not in range, then I'm going to just, well, okay. I guess it doesn't matter the order. So I'll just do the test. If it's in range, then it's okay to do our shadow mapping calculations and do whatever. But if it's not in range, then I'm just going to return 1.0, meaning the point is in light. So there. That's the most basic way to solve it. If it's in range, we sample from the shadow map as usual. Otherwise, we return the, it's in light. So, I'm going to stop running now. Didn't realize I was still running. So if I build and run again, okay, you notice shadow mapping still working. And if I slowly start zooming out, you notice that the shadow map fades into the distance without there being a giant band all over the place. So we've effectively solved the problem. But, almost. There's a slight issue, which is a little... Ah, there it is. See off in the distance? There's still this slight band of... Much less obvious, but there is a slight band where the shadow map... Well... <laughs> where it it's, sort of fades out. You know, there's still a slight band there. And the reason for this is, for some reason, our current solution for clamping on X and Y isn't entirely perfect. I don't know exactly why it's not perfect, but it's not. So what we want to do is just perform an in-range check on everything else. If our Z and our F, shadow map core dot X, and our shadow map chord dot y. If all those are in range, then we'll sample the variance shadow map. Otherwise, we'll return 1.0. So there. Now if I build and run, our shadow mapping is artifact three in, free in that regard. There's no shadow map banding at all going on. So, yeah, if I try and replicate that scenario, you notice, hey, things work out just fine now. So great, we've solved the shadow mapping issue. And, yeah, so that solved the issue. And with that, we can actually get rid of our, well, our old hack with doing one minus depth and such. So I'm going to get rid of that in Shadow Map Generator and in Sampling.glh. And in our, wait, oh, okay, no, never mind, but that's fine. And in our rendering engine, I can change our clear color for the shadow map. Wherever, the, wherever that is, right here. Yeah, back to just clearing to zero. Apparently I'd already done that, off for some reason, but... Yeah, we can change it back... Or actually it should be clearing to 1.0, shouldn't it? Well, either way... We, we can change it back to that, so now we won't have banding issues by doing things this way anymore. So, so yeah. And there, so that solved the banding issue. It's that simple. And actually, I think you can change it back to 0, 0.0. I'm going to test that. And yeah, it looks like everything's working out just fine. Oh, nope. There is a slight issue. See? There's a slight thing there if you do it that way. So, yeah, you still do want to clear it to 1.0, 1 .0, 1 .0. I'm just going to make sure that the, that last band doesn't show up. I don't think it will, but just to be sure... Okay, so that appears to have gotten rid of all the banding issues like that. So there, that's solved the banding issue. That's a basic solution to it. And there. One thing I do want to mention is you don't have to branch here if you, if you don't want, because we are performing a dynamic branch, and some people prefer not to dynamically branch in 
in their shaders for, in some cases, for various reasons. And you do not need to perform a dynamic branch to do this. You can use the step function and the max function to do the exact same thing if, for whatever reason, dynamic branch won't work for what you're doing. So just wanted to mention that. I'm not going to show you code to do that here because it's not that hard to figure out if you really don't want the dynamic branch in there, but just wanted to point that out. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.